Uh, I got this text from my brother-in-law. This popped up on his phone. Um, here, here it is on the screen. Uh, same or different person. So, <clears throat> this actually happened multiple times to people. They always send it to me, and uh, I, uh, I realize I have missed my calling in life, apparently. And... Uh, but I don't know if you've noticed, you've never seen Santa and me in the same room at the same time. So I'm not saying anything, uh, but uh, yeah, ho, ho, ho. Ken, Ken's giving me a run for my money back there. So, uh, so here we go. Would you bow your head and your hearts with me today? Thank you, God. Thank you that we can laugh together. Uh, thank you that we can share our tears together. God, thank you that... Um, you are with us and uh, that you have good plans for us today. Holy Spirit, we just wait on you. It's not by might, not by power, but by your spirit. So Holy Spirit, come speak to us. I pray for a supernatural transformation in our lives because of the word. Give us boldness, God, today. Give us hope today. Open the eyes of our heart to see today. God, we love you today. Thank you for this time together. Amen. Amen. I love opening God's Word together because it answers so many questions from life. And probably the two biggest questions of life is, who am I and why am I here? Who am I and why am I here? It's the question of identity. Who am I? And the question of destiny. Why am I here? And Many people spend their entire life trying to answer those two questions. But you can't answer those questions apart from God's Word. Because if you try to find that somewhere else, it's, it's, just not, it's, it's never going to be satisfying because God created you for a purpose. God created us for a relationship with Him. That's the original design of creation that he created male and female to live in a garden, to fellowship, to walk with him, to be close to him. You and I were created for a relationship with God. But then we sinned, we fell, we've fallen short, we're far from God. And, and I love the heart of God because just because we sinned doesn't mean that he wanted to stop having a relationship with us. In fact, right after they sinned, the first words of God was, where are you? Where are you? That God was seeking after his creation. That God is seeking after you. That, that he went after those that were lost in sin. He went after them to give them a moment to confess, to repent, so that he could welcome them home, to redeem them, to, to restore them. And that tells me that God's heart is for you, that God wants that relationship, and that he has good plans for you. <clears throat> now, we love hearing about good plans. I've been talking about that for a couple weeks now. We like when I hear God has good plans for me, right? Good. I like good. But there's also a plan. God has a plan. You can write this down. It's God's plan, and it's God's good. It's not your plan and what you think is good. It's God's plan and God's good. And I know what people would say. They would probably say, well, if it's not my way, my plan, I'm not sure if I want it. If it's not what I think is good, I, I, I don't know. Listen, you can trust God with his plan and his good because it's a lot better than yours. I want to tell you today, if you, if you think, well, I'm going to make my own plan, I'm going to do my own thing, I'm going to do my, my, I'm going to have my own good, good luck with that, because when we lean on our own understanding, there'll be a picture on the screen, this is what happens when you lean on your own understanding. It, it, oh, maybe not, I don't know, there's, is there, a, there it is, that's what happens, that's what happens when you lean on your own understanding. So we want to live our best life, and our best life comes from the plans and the purposes of God. You can write this down. God, your creator, has a good plan for you and your life. He has a purpose. He has a destiny for you. Everything in his creation, in the entire universe, it's so intricately detailed that God had a purpose for everything. 
and you are the highest point of creation. That's what the Bible tells us, and so he has a plan for you. He has a plan for everyone. If you're alive today, he has a plan for you, right? I mean, if it doesn't matter the season of life, the stage of life. Every day, God has a plan for you. Why? Because write this down. God is a planner. God is a planner. I want to tell you, God doesn't do things by accident. I'm not a planner. I have to work very hard to plan. I like just showing up and having fun, right? That's, I, I have to work hard at planning. Um, but God is a planner. He does, he does that from the very beginning of our lives. He's got a plan. It says in Psalm 139, beginning of verse 13, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Familiar passage of scripture. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. That God designed you in the womb to be who you are. If he needed you to be different, you'd be different. If he needed you to be a, a different gender, he would have made you a different gender. If he needed you to be a different person, you would be a different person. If he needed you to be taller or shorter, you just fill in the blank, he would have made you that way. He made you perfect. He designed you in the womb. This isn't something that happens by chance. This is something that God does. And, and many people ask, why are Christians so pro-life? It's because we're fearfully and wonderfully made. And from the womb, we know that God has a purpose for us. Write this down. I say this all the time, but this is so important. You were created by God on purpose and for a purpose. You were created by God on purpose for a purpose. You are here. You are alive for a reason. And that, that's why there's such a deep longing inside each of us to answer that question, why am I here? And unfortunately, the world will tell you that your life doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. You're one of billions. You know, who make, what makes you so special? And, and what makes me so special is that I belong to God, that he knit me together for a reason and for a purpose. He created me for a purpose, and he created you for a purpose as well. This will be on the screen. You can write it down if you want to, but it's a little bit long, but let me just read it here. Everything in heaven and earth is working together for the good of those who submit to and connect with God's plans and purposes for their lives. Everything is working the, the plan of God in your life. We know this so clearly from Romans 8.28, right? And we know that God causes everything to work together for good of those who love God, who are called according to his purposes for them. So we know that, right? God's got a plan. He's got a purpose. But what, what about the next verse, verse 29? It says, For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. When you have that verse, this is what I want you to write down from this verse, that his plan for your life is to become like Jesus every day, everywhere. The Bible says, not just in Romans 8, 29, but also in the book of Ephesians, and hinted throughout that God predestined us, and, and it's not a predestination to heaven or hell, he predestined us to be conformed into the image of Jesus. See, that was God's plan from the very beginning, that he would be in relationship with you, that he'd be at work in your life, and here's what the ultimate plan is, that you and I would look like Jesus, that, that, that we would see Jesus in our life, that, that, that that's God's plan, that's God's way. It, it's good to become like Jesus. The older I get, I don't want to look more like Santa, I want to look more like Jesus, right? Right? I, I, but, but the older I get, the more I walk with God, the more I want to look like Jesus. You ever see those couples that have been married a very long time, and they, they begin to look like each other? Leslie's hoping that never happens. Uh, so it's been over 30 years, so I think, she, I think she's safe. But, 
But when somebody has a baby, immediately you begin, okay, does the baby look like the father or the mother? I can never tell. I'm just like, it's a baby. It, it's, it's cute. That's just let's be happy with that. But we try to pick that out. Uh, the D'Angelo's daughter got married a couple weeks ago, uh, Alyssa, and they're taking a family picture in the photo booth, and I'm, I'm watching with Leslie, and I'm like, that is like the best-looking family I've ever seen in my entire life, and uh, thank God for Laura, right, Jim? I mean, that's, uh, no, but, <laughs> but no, it's like, but they look like each other, and, and, they, and it's just, it was just fun seeing them together because they resemble each other, they're close, it, because they're family, and God says, you belong to me, I placed you in my family, I want you all to look like me, I want you to, to be like me. And, and so as we get older, we should be looking more like Jesus every day. So the theological term for looking like Jesus is the word sanctification. And you probably heard that word sanctification, holy, set apart, belonging to God. Um, and, and I know it's a theological term, but don't get bored. This is actually really good. Write this down. Here's the definition of sanctification. The Holy Spirit's work for our proper functioning according to God's original design and purpose. I don't know about you, but I know that's a theological term, but that kind of excites me that the Holy Spirit's at work inside of me to get me to God's original design and purpose. The, the questions of who am I and why am I here, that I would allow the Holy Spirit to work in my life so I can become what God created me to be, that his design, his purpose would be inside of me. And, and I can't do this myself because a lot of times when we think of sanctification, we think of, okay, I've got to be holy and I've got to follow these rules and I can't do this, but I can do that. And, and listen, you didn't save yourself and you can't sanctify yourself. Both of those are gifts of God, that God is at work inside of us. It's not you trying harder, but it's you yielding to God and allowing him to work inside of you. See, when Jesus died on the cross, when he died, we, he gave us two things. First of all, justification, right? That we are forgiven of our sin. And the other benefit of the cross is sanctification, that he is going to make us more like Jesus, that he's going to be at work in our life. It's not just that we say a prayer and, and say, okay, now I'm saved, but that God continues to work in our life, that, that you're here today because you want God to continue to work in your life, that you could be more like Jesus. Jesus. And so I want us to realize that we can't do this on our own. They're both gifts, but I've got to, I've got to, I've got to be holy. I, I, I belong to God. See, that's, that's our position with God. We belong to God, so he's made us holy. This is really important that we understand that God has made us holy. When you think of the temple, Let's, well, let's go to the tabernacle, just the tabernacle in the Old Testament. If you don't know what the tabernacle was in the Old Testament, they called it the tent of meeting. And it was a literal tent that housed the presence of God. And inside that tent, there were different things. And they, if you study it, it all represents Christ because it's just so beautiful how that's done. Maybe we'll do a sermon on the, the tabernacle someday. But, but everything in that, 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 that tent of meeting uh, whether it be the, the, the wash basin or the candlesticks or the ark or anything. It was made of wood and metal and, the, and obviously cloth for the tent and, and all of those things. Now, cloth, wood, metal, those aren't holy in and of themselves. But when they were put into the tabernacle, they became holy, right? Why were they holy? Because they belonged to God. Because they housed the presence of God. And so that fabric and that wood and that metal became holy, not in and of itself, but because of, of where God was. That's you in Christ. You are holy because you house the presence of God. So we have to realize that I belong to God. I don't belong to this world. I don't belong to sin. I don't belong to anybody. I don't even belong to myself. I belong to God, so I'm holy. But that's not the end of the story. It's not just why well, I'm holy. He wants to 
continue to make me holy. That's called progressive sanctification. You have positional sanctification that you're holy, but then there's progressive sanctification. It'll be on the screen. It's the ongoing work of God's grace whereby he enables believers to put sin to death in their lives and conforms them more and more into the image of Christ. That, that I allow God to be so at work in my life. Again, this is not you doing it, but I'm allowing God and I'm walking with God so closely that sin isn't even tempting anymore. That, that, that the power of sin has been removed and that I'm becoming more like Jesus every day. That I'm seeing the fruit of the Spirit in my life because I'm walking so close to God. The goal is that Christ-likeness, that closeness to God. There's power in proximity. You want to be close to God. I've used this illustration before, uh, but it never gets old because um, in, in our original home, uh, we had a family room, and Leslie had her side, and I had my side. So if we were watching TV, she had her couch, and I had my couch. And then when we downsized, <clears throat> she said, no more sitting on opposite sides of the room. We're going to sit on the couch together. I'm going to buy a couch, and it'll be just our couch, and we will sit on that couch together. The couch will be on the screen. She bought the world's tiniest couch. <laughs> there is no lazy boy in our living room. There is no other place to sit. I have to This is not a comfortable couch, by the way. And um, so, so every day, I have to sit next to Leslie. Now, what's funny is um, it has made us closer these last number of years because I have to sit next, there's nowhere else to go, right? And so, and, and I like sitting there, and it's brought us closer together. And, and that's the way it is with God, to live in proximity with him. That, that I'm on one side of my life, he's on the other side of my life, and sometimes we say hi. No, it's like, God, I want you, uh, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, right? Uh, that your name will be praised. I'm going to praise you when I wake up, I'm going to praise you all day long, and when I go to bed, I'm going to praise you at night that I'm going to walk with you all the days of my life, that I'm going to abide with you, God. That's the heart of God, that we would be close to him. And when you're close, that's when he begins to transform you. That's when he begins to change you. And I believe that is God's greatest miracle, right? Taking somebody like you, like me, and making me more like Jesus, I would have said good luck to anybody, right? But he can do it. He can transform your life to be more like Jesus. I was thinking, how do we, how do we kind of explain this? Um, and so I thought of Play-Doh. And so uh, the fun thing is, is we don't have little kids anymore, so we don't go out and buy toys. But I got to go to the toy department and buy Play-Doh. I was very excited. So maybe someday with grandchildren we can do that. But uh, yeah, just the... Play-Doh, and you know the smell of Play-Doh when you first take it out, and who, yeah, it smells, I don't know what that smell is, but, <laughs> whoo, it's good, no, it's good, so, but Play-Doh, right, it's fun, it's fun, it's, it's those things, and they got the little machines, and you can make little things of it, and just, you know, and I, I like this because um, several times in the Old Testament, the Bible says that, that he is the potter and I'm the clay. And that he's molding me and he's shaping me. And, and he's the one at work in my life. And, and the clay doesn't tell the potter what to do, right? It's the potter shaping and molding. And you could say, well, I don't, I, I don't look very good. God's like, I'm not done with you. I'm still working. I'm still working. Well, I got this broken piece. Don't worry. I got you. And God's molding us and shaping us. What happens if you leave this out on the counter all night? It's going to get hard, right? It's going to be like a rock, a little, little orange rock. And that's why we have to stay in his hands, so that he, we're, we're moldable, that we're shapeable. And, and then if you feel like you've been distant from God and, and hard, just the Bible says uh, in Ezekiel, I just love it, just pray that God gives you a, a, a soft heart, a heart of flesh for your heart of stone. And, and he'll come in and he'll begin to mold you. And, and what's interesting uh, is like, who do you want molding you? I want the creator of the universe molding me, who has a purpose for my life. I don't want the world molding me. I don't want to place my life in someone else's hands. I want to be in God's hands so that he can be molding me and shaping me. 
You know, it's interesting, the more I mold and shape, if I stop and look, I can see my fingerprints. And I don't know about you, but you can write it down. I want God's fingerprints all over my life. Don't you want that? You want to be more like Jesus. You want to be a part of his family. You want him molding you and shaping you. And, and, and I want people not to look at me and see Santa Claus. I want people to look at me and see Jesus, right? Right? We want to, we want to allow him to mold us and to shape us. Yes. So how do we do this? I'm going to give you four things. It spells the word holy. They'll be on the screen. When we're going to walk with God and be holy, this is, this is what we bring to the table. God does all the work. We bring this to the table. We, we are humble, we're obedient, we're loving, and we're yielded. You have to come to God obedient. And I mean, you should say humble first. We'll just do humble. You got to come to God humble. You can't come in pride and, God, I got this plan. I got this way. Uh, I'll just, you know, thanks for blessing me. And, and uh, God's like, no, no, come humble. A lot of times, his plan has nothing to do with your plan. And his timing may look really off to you, but it's not. He has perfect timing. He has a perfect plan. It's good. And if it doesn't good, good look good right now, it's okay. He's going to make it good. And, and so we've got to come to him humble. We've got to come to him and say, okay, God, it's your way, not my way. And then we got to be obedient, because a lot of times we can be humble, but we're like, I don't want, I don't want to exactly do what you want me to do, God. I, but God says, no, that's, that's part of following Jesus, is just being obedient to whatever he says in his word. So God, if you said it, I believe it, that's what we do. That's how we live. So I'm humble, I'm obedient, I'm loving. Greatest commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. That I worship him every time we gather together, whether I feel like it or not, I just lift his name high. He's worthy to be praised, right? I love him. He's called, we're called to walk with him, to be with him, called to love our neighbor as ourself. Uh, you want to be holy? Just love God and love others, and God will change your heart. Be yielded to him. That's the last one, yielded to him. Just, just allow him to, to mold you and shape you, because chances are you can see this sermon illustration and say, yes, I, I want God to mold me, but too often our, our lives are molded by the noise that surrounds us, by the world that surrounds us. And sometimes we have to remove ourselves from that noise and spend some time with God so that we will be yielded and allowing him to shape us and mold us. You could be saying, well, Daryl, you know, obviously uh, somebody, God can use somebody like you, um, but I don't know if he could use somebody like me. I want to tell you, he has a plan for you. He's got a good plan for you. He's got a great plan for you. And, and he's created you for a purpose. And listen, you may feel like, I don't know if he can mold me and shape me into anything. Yes, he can, because guess what? You're not finished. I'm not finished. We're not finished yet. First, uh, Philippians 1, 6, uh, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. See, God's at work. God only uses imperfect people because that's all he's got. <laughs> so he only uses. So don't say, ah, oh, God can't use me. Yes, he can. He doesn't leave you in your mess. He, he saves you to make you more like Jesus, to be a part of his family. God's working in you. He's working on you. And he's going to deliver every promise in his word to you. It's what, what he says. It's what he does. That's who he is. You belong to God. Let me show you this, Isaiah 43, uh, beginning of verse 1. It says, but now, this is what the Lord says, he who created you, Jacob, who, who formed you, Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. Okay, right here, highlight this in your Bible. You are mine. Look at that, look at that, hold on there. You belong to God. He holds you in his hands. He's got you. Next verse, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you, and when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned, the flames will not set you ablaze. You belong to me. I have a good plan for you. 
Uh, nothing's going to destroy you. I've got you in the palm of my hand, and I'm molding, and I'm working, and I'm shaping. And if you remember the handout from last week, all those promises in God's word are true. He's saying you're more than a conqueror. Like, isn't that great? You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to worry. You can do all things through me. Like, we just have to hold that and realize that, that, that God is at work because, look, we're not done. You know, the next step after sanctification, the Bible says, is glorification. That when we get to be with Jesus, oh, man, it's, that's, we're going to be back in that perfect relationship with him, just what he created us for. And, and so we, we have the justification and the sanctification is going on right now, and God's molding and shaping, but he's doing it for a purpose for being with him forever. Part of my uh, prayer times every morning uh, is uh, just waiting on God, and, and I ask God the question, what's on your mind? God, what's on your mind today? And, and I begin to write uh, down if the Lord's speaking to me or uh, he has a word, or, and I just, you know, sometimes it just flows and sometimes just a couple sentences, but I just, God, what's on your mind today? And, and that's not what I preach, it's just for me, what God's speaking, and And so I prayed a a week or two ago. I'm like, God, what's on your mind today? And he said, you. I'm like, okay, that's great. Thank you, God. And went on with my prayer time. Next day I woke up, God, what's on your mind? Second day, you. Okay. And felt a little uncomfortable, went on with my prayer time. Next day, wake up, God, what's on your mind? You are on my mind. And I paused and... uh, just had a moment with God that he's thinking about me. And he's not just thinking about me, he's thinking about you every single day because you belong to him. He says, I'm thinking about you. I have good plans for you. You don't, you don't have to strive on your own. Just place your hand in my hand and let's walk through today together. I, I've got good plans for you. I'm thinking of you. I know things aren't happening in the speed you want them to happen, and maybe it's, you know, taking longer, or it doesn't look like it's going to work out, but you know what? It's going to work out. It's going to be perfect. I'm not done. I'm not done. But while I'm working, I'm putting my fingerprints all over you. I'm making you like myself. And we just have to sit and submit to God and allow Him to work in our life. Amen? you bow your heads and your hearts with me today. We're going to go back into a time of worship. I asked the worship team if we could just worship the Lord for a while because this isn't something we do on our own. We just don't do this on our own. It has to be God at work inside of us in, in relationship. Lord, we just, we just pause here before we enter back into a time of worship. We just pause for a moment. And God, we, we want our life in your hands. We want your fingerprints all over us. God, we, we know that you have good plans. And so, God, we don't want our good plans. We want your good plans. We don't want our plan. We want your plan. God, we just, we need you, God, in our lives. You have the best. That's what we want. We want to abide with you. We want to be close to you. We want to experience all that you have for us. And so, Lord, help us to know who we are, that you created us on purpose and for a purpose, that you created us for a relationship with you, to bring glory to your name, to look like you, to be in your family. God, we're so grateful today. So grateful today. God, we love you, and and Lord, we're just going to spend some time in worship today so you can just continue your work inside of us. As we worship the Lord now, I'm just going to ask you to connect with God in a fresh new way, and I I know we've already worshiped God, but let's just, would you stand with me, and and, uh, if you want to... kneel down or or walk around or whatever just this is your moment to connect with God to go deeper with him and uh let's just let's just draw near to the Lord for a few minutes and let him do his work inside of us